Yeah. Well, we, we moved around. Um, we moved around a fair bit. We we did most of the tracking of, of the acoustic instruments, so the drums, the acoustic guitars, the piano. Uh, we did a Hammond organ in a very very famous studio in London called Air Studios, which belongs to George Martin, and it's a beautiful beautiful studio, great space, and. Um, the guitars, I did all of the guitars that were what you would call uh, real guitars, in other words, guitars are actually going through amps and stuff, I did with, um, with um, our American guitar player, John Wesley, and he has a wonderful collection of uh, vintage guitars, vintage pedals, vintage amps. So I went over to Florida to work at his studio for a couple of weeks, and I always try to do that. Most of the sounds, I would say, were, were most of the guitar sounds, or 60% of the guitar sounds, were uh, done at my own studio, which is... I call it a studio, but it's just a computer, really, in, in, a, in a little room at my parents' place at the moment. And uh, just creating guitar tones by using modelling, by using plugins. Um, I'm very, very, very far removed from being a purist when it comes to, to sounds. I know some people are like, you know, you can't create guitar tones unless you're going through real amps. I don't agree with that. I think, you, I think if you have a very... Um, vivid imagination for sounds, you can create some wonderfully kind of impressionistic and stylized guitar tones. And you'll hear on our records that there's a lot of guitar sounds that are not even trying to sound real. You know, they are, they are um, by definition, they are stylized, impressionistic, electronic sounds. And uh, so I would say a good 60% of the sounds on the record are, a lot of them carried actually over from the original demos. In that case, I, I, knew, I knew the kind of tone I wanted. Um, so I kind of hear it in my head. And I think, I think at the end of the day, this, this is the difference between being a producer and not being a producer. Is a produ Anyone can hear a sound in their head. Um, a producer is someone who knows how to realise that sound in a way. Or at least a good engineer is someone who knows how to realise that sound. A producer at least knows how to explain to the engineer what sound they're hearing in their head. Um, and I think those are things I've just learned over the years by trial and error, how to, how to get the sound I hear in my head out into the real world. Um, so certainly that would have been something I would have probably imagined in my mind first. And a little bit of experiment, maybe not quite the way I heard it, but, but uh, yes, that, that's something. I, you know, I love those kind of colours, I love those kind of sounds that are not necessarily obvious, organic guitar tones. They're more impressionistic, they're more about sound design than they are about uh, technical musical ability. I cannot work unless I'm hearing the instrument in context. Um, because for me, the sound and the texture of the instrument is everything, in a way. Um, it's interesting that these days we have a very different approach to working than, than say, the way that people used to work uh, in previous uh, musical generations, which is that they would work on, on multi-track tape and very often they wouldn't even begin to put all of the parts of the jigsaw together until they went into the mixing stage. Nowadays, with computer-based um, recording, you're mixing as you go along because you can save your mix and recall it. So as you, as you are tracking instruments, you're, certainly the way I work, as I'm tracking an instrument or a guitar part, I'm finding exactly the right tone and the right volume and everything in the right EQ for it to sit in the mix. And until I feel I've positioned that perfectly in the mix, I cannot proceed with the next stage. And if you think about it, that makes perfect sense because everything in the mix affects everything else in the mix. So how do you know whether to track a guitar five times or once if you cannot hear it in context? And I think that's one of the beauties about computer recording technology these days is you can immediately... Well, you are always, as you go along, you're always constructing your mix. So you record a guitar part, and you can place it exactly in the mix with the right sound, the right EQ. And that's very important to me. I can't imagine working any other way. If you have a particular sound, and it's a very stylized, impressionistic sound, sometimes just playing one note is enough. 
if you have a very raw sound, you tend to some perhaps overcomplicate things and, and overcompensate for the fact that you don't have a particularly interesting sound. So it, for me, it's all about context and all about the sound design and, and the production. Uh, it's, it's fairly unusual uh, chords. Um, I don't even know the names of them. That, that's, I mean, not, that's not to say that's, that's particularly difficult in my case because I don't know the, the names of many chords. But um, I found these interesting chords or interesting chord shapes with a, with a capo on fifth fret, which obviously gives it a more kind of like a mandolin, almost like a singing quality. And so we have these uh, two groups of chords, two groups of two chords each, one of which is... Played in a very staccato way, um, and then multi-tracked, I think, about four or five times. So you get this very big, very lush wall, of quite staccato, very dry guitars. And then the second chord progression, it moves from that one. To this one. And then the same shape. So that's the same shape. Just, I mean, very often with me, because I don't know the names of chords and I'm not searching specifically, you know, I must play a, a minor diminished ninth here or whatever. Um, I'm literally just looking for shapes with my fingers that sound appealing. And I like the slightly jazzy, the jazzy kind of inversions. I love, I lo one chord I do know that I love, I love major seven chords. I use these all the time those kind of things, you know. There's something very sad about them, but very beautiful at the same time. So you get those kind of qualities with these kind of chords as well. So that was Time Flies, and in a sense, those kind of chords, those, the way those chords sounded, did suggest to me quite a nostalgic song. So the lyrics became very nostalgic, very much about my childhood, and it was definitely, I think, a response to the way those chords made me feel. Almost always, yeah, almost always, yeah. Sometimes piano, but yeah, mostly guitar.